All right, what I want to do now is look at doing calculus with the direct delta function and really just deriving some properties using calculus that relate uh, are related to the direct delta function. So the first one that I want to look at is um, a problem that'll look similar, similar to the stuff that we've already done, but with one difference. So here I want to take the integral from minus infinity to some point x of our delta function with respect to this dummy variable x prime. So what's this integral going to be equal to? Well, it depends. Uh, we know that if, if this x right here is, say, minus 10, then we're never actually going to reach the point in our domain where del the delta function spikes up. So it'll be equal to 0. So it's going to be 0 if what? If x never gets to 0. So if x is less than 0. And 1, well, 1 if you actually do end up including this is the zero here in your domain. So one, one if actually x is greater than zero. Okay, um, this is great. And in fact, this function right here has a special name. This function is called the heavy side function. It's a function of x. So, um, so, so, and, and some people actually also like to call it um, theta function. Or, uh, or theta functions, like I, I've heard it called theta functions more than I've heard it called the heavy side function, but both are fine. So so graphically, what, what is this function actually doing here? This function, uh, um, this function looks something, uh, something like this. It's gonna be equal to, I'll use green. Uh, zero everywhere left of the origin, and then one everywhere right of the origin. And I'll just say this is one, you know, zero, if we want minus one down here or something. Uh, so th this is our heavy set function. This is what we get uh, if we integrate this delta function, but we don't know exactly where we're ending up. Uh, so, okay. This is this is great. This is this is a nice nice little function here that we've um, defined. Uh, I will say one one thing. Um, I'll go into the details just a little bit. So one one thing that I haven't told you, or one thing you might rightly ask is, well, uh, what happens when x is exactly equal to zero? So what what happens if we stop exactly on the delta function? And that's a hard question. Um, in part because at, at, at zero, it's kind of undefined because we haven't actually completely included it in our domain. It's on the edge. Uh, and so because of that, the, the long story short, and there's kind of a lot to say here, but the, the long story short is that well, how, what, how you define what happens at zero is, is all about convention. So some people, some people like it. Um, some people like to say that at zero, it's exactly a half because... Um, because you're taking the average between the two. Some people like to put it up here at one. Um, a few rare people will sometimes put it down at minus one. But really the point is that it's not it's not well defined. And so because of that, uh, you know, this type of question or this type of issue will probably never show up for you. And if it does, you should ask that if first, if what you're doing makes sense. And uh, yeah, you can go go from there. But yeah, so 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 really, all that I'm doing here is just showing you that okay, integral minus infinity to x for some delta function is going to be this heavy side th or theta function where it's zero up to one point one otherwise. Okay, that's great. But this is actually enough to learn something very interesting about the delta function. Here, what we can learn is that if you take the derivative of not not delta function of the heavy side function with respect to x, well, what happens? We integrate delta to get h, so likewise, differentiate h, we get delta of x. Okay, that's kind of a, this, this is kind of cool, and it's something that actually does come up every once in a while, so it's a good thing to know. Um, and, and, and it's just pretty cool. Uh, you know, if you, if you have this type of piecewise function right here, then boom, you take a derivative, what happens? Slap. 
this right here, this, this discontinuity shoots up to infinity in such a way that you get the delta function. So, okay, that, that's pretty cool and, and, and useful. So that's great. Now let's look at another way in which uh, derivatives are related to the delta function. So another question that we can ask, kind of going off of the properties that we're familiar with is, what is this integral equal to? Integral minus infinity to infinity, f of x, delta prime of x dx. So what, what have we done here? We, we're, 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 if this prime had been here, this would be an integral we're already familiar with. We know that the delta function just picks out from this function here, um, x equals zero. So if this prime wasn't here, we'd say, well, it's equal to f of zero. But this prime is in fact here, so we have to do something about it. And really, it'd be nice if we can get rid of it. Because uh, then that would reduce it to some problem that we know how to solve. We know how to do problems with delta functions. We don't know how to do problems with delta primes. So how, what are we going to do? Well, uh, the rule, the, rule the, yeah, the, the thing that we always do whenever we see a derivative we don't want is use, use integration by parts. And so if we use integration by parts on this, what are we going to get? We're going to get uh, f of x delta of x evaluated from minus infinity to infinity minus the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f prime of x delta of x dx. So this is nice. We've gotten rid of all delta primes on this right-hand side of the equation. Uh, so let's first look at this, at this piece right in front. So one thing to notice is that delta of x is equal to zero at infinity and minus infinity. Uh, you know, this, this whole thing right here is just going to be, you know, f of infinity times zero minus uh, f of minus infinity times zero. So this whole quantity right here goes to zero. And so we're left with, we're left with just this piece right here, this integral minus infinity to infinity, f prime of x delta of x dx. So we've so this this is how you deal with derivatives on the delta function. You do integration by parts, and you see that really what you're just doing, and the way that people will often write this is that f of x times delta prime of x outside the integral is equal to minus f prime of x delta of x. And this is a this is a core property to know. So, so this is great. We now know how to handle a single derivative on our delta function, but what if we have multiple? What if we have two or three or four delta uh, um, primes on our delta? Well, let's, let's, let's do it for the case when there are two derivatives on delta, and we'll kind of see how the pattern goes from there. So let's say we wanted to do this integral, f of x delta prime prime of x dx. Well, we're going to do the same trick as before. We're going to use integration by parts. And so what's going to happen? Uh, we do it the first time. We're going to get f of x delta prime of x evaluated from minus infinity to infinity minus integral minus infinity to infinity f prime of x delta prime of x dx. OK, uh, let's look at this first piece again. Well, we know that. <laughs> Well, yeah, let's think a bit about what delta prime of x is going to look like. Well, we know that uh, the delta function is constantly equal to zero outside of the origin. So what that means, you know, if you have a constant zero and you take the derivative, you're going to get zero again. So that means that at, uh, that means that at infinity and minus infinity, delta prime of x is equal to zero. So this whole thing contributes zero. And so we're left with this, this integral right here. Now our, our original guy, f of x delta double prime of x is equal to minus f prime of x delta prime of x. But hey, we can use the exact same thing that we learned up here to evaluate this integral. And that's straightforward to do. And what we find is that f of x um, delta double prime of x dx is equal to, well, what's it equal to? It's equal to positive minus infinity to infinity f double prime of x delta of x dx. And so this property right here can be generalized one step to f of x 
delta to the nth derivative of x is equal to what? Well, we're going to be doing integration by parts n times, and that's going to pull out a minus sign, uh, or a minus 1 n times, times, well, we're going to be moving the derivative over n times, times delta of x. All right. So here we have it. This right here is the core property for dealing with derivatives of the delta function and, and for uh, figuring out how to evaluate integrals where you know you, you have integral you have derivatives on your delta function, but really you want to move them over to f of x.